So it was almost 10 years ago that I asked him to be in Desperado. And uh, we were already thinking about four rooms. While we were shooting four rooms, we said, how about doing this movie, Dust Till Dawn? Now, 10 years later, he asked me to do score for Kill Bill 2, and I was already talking to him about Sin City. Robert always talks about like three projects in advance, and at some point, he mentioned it once, like just in passing. Robert was doing this movie, and he thought, you know, it'd be perfect if Quentin came down and did one scene. I love film, and you know, that's my thing, all right? And, uh, and I love Robert's movies and stuff, but you know, I'm just not about shooting it on digital. And uh, he was intrigued by it, but I knew he wouldn't do it on his own, so I wanted him to come down and, you know, shoot a short, so he could try out digital, so he could see how it is to work with actors in a digital realm, and, and kind of, and I thought he would like the source material once he found out what it was. Well, remember, you, you actually, you showed up uh, at the editing room for a, a spotting session, and you walked in with Frank Miller. And, so this is and that was when I realized, <laughs> all right, one, I was like, Frank Miller, all right, you know, uh, my assistant editor is, is a gigantic comic book geek, and like, it was like one of the happiest days of his life. And I even remember as we go into the room, he was outside in the room, and he's like, <laughs> when I showed him Quentin about the opening test we did for Sin City, he said, oh, wow, that's the one you were asking me to come direct a piece for? I said, yeah, this is the one. You know, not only does he come in with Frank Miller and everything and like, show him some scenes and stuff, he goes, so here's what we're doing. And then he shows me the opening uh, uh, scene. And it's not like, you know, you know, sort of, kind of, this will be sort of what it looks like. It's like, boom, it was like ready to play at the center of my dome, <laughs> all right? And then I read the scene and it's fantastic. Then I hear that you know, Clive Owen is in it and Benicio Del Toro, you know, who I've like, I've, I've never even met those guys, all right? And, uh, you know, and Quentin said, sure, I'll do it. So I had him come direct a whole scene sequence for the big fat kill. This, the scene I did in the film is um, the girls of Old Town have uh, just killed Jackie Boy. And now Dwight has to dispose of the body. And the thing is, he's got to drive from Old Town to the tar pits. And they're just going to take the whole car and dump it in the pits, all right? But then the girls didn't put enough gas in the car, <laughs> all right? So now he's got to, like, get the car to the pits on whatever tank of gas he has, not get stopped by the cops, the whole nine yards. So Dwight, who is, like, just completely Mr. Cool, is just starting to get a little tense. And in his tension, Jackie Boy, in his mind, comes to life. It's got you smoking there, bud. And starts having a conversation with him in the car. And basically, it's him talking to himself. But Jackie Boy is, 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 is voicing all of his fears about what could happen and what's going to happen. So you basically, you have a scene of a guy talking to himself. You ain't even gonna make it to the pits. You shut the hell up. I'll make it. One of the things that's terrific about it is as much as Benicio as Jackie Boy is taunting him, this strange kind of camaraderie starts developing between the two of them, and it's really funny. It's really, really funny, and especially if, if you're a fan of the books, you know how Dwight is just so unflappable. And to see him little by little by little lose it in the course of the scene, all right, is just priceless. We wanted a different mm -hmm. tone for that scene mm -hmm. anyway, and you gave it a stamp, and I think people will know that you directed that sequence, <laughs> which was cool. I think that was sort of the goal, and we pulled it off. If, if, I told you in the morning of, you didn't have to do anything. You don't feel like you have to come in right, yeah. and have to deliver something that'll mm -hmm. be really distinct, but you just naturally will do that, because mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. your style, and well, that's what was cool about it. Well, it was funny, because I actually came in with like somewhat of a shot list, and I came in I was shocked. Like, I was like, like man, I'm... Prepared. I go, well, look, I'm nervous, all right? I, I, <laughs> I prepare when I'm nervous. I'm like, I don't prepare that much. I feel bad. No, I don't prepare on my movies. I was just nervous. I didn't want to let you down. I didn't want to look like an idiot. Oh no, so to me, to me, everyone is. He came in knowing already what his shot was going to be, how the, what the colors of the lights, there were going to be colored lights flashing on the actors, but keep them black and white. You've got the bouncing headlights, you know, they, you know, you know fanning out from uh, their, their profile. Well, visually, it's a really stunning piece, and he put a stamp all over it. It was fascinating working with Quentin because I, I got to see a completely different style than Robert's. 
even though the three of us share so much in terms of a pop cultural sensibility, surprise, shockingly har harmonious given the, the, the enormity of the three egos in the room. I was gonna see just a little bit more of your eyes. No, but we really <laughs> held back and did our, I mean, I was really just there as the camera operator and editor. Frank was there as the writer. We really let you just direct the actors. And I'd hear Frank go, oh, that's good to know. And go right over to him and say, what did Quentin just tell you? What did you just learn? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, oh, well, you never should do this or that or that. It's like, advice I never would have probably would take me another 10 years to figure that out <laughs> it's a recipe for chaos having three directors at one point you know it's like who do you talk to there was none of that none of that it was it's easy hey, but your head's standing like this in that first part when you look at him and we see that you're alive and Maybe I uh, just a little turn. That's like it. That, yeah. That's exactly but it. But you look at the gauge. I'm gonna really read. Oh, there you go. For the rate, for the gauge thing. That's it. This is just showing. Up. This is the vampire moment. Yeah, okay. Showing that you're. Uh... And it was great because Benicio was walking away, and he turned around and he saw me after the scene was over. He goes, and he saw me. I was like smiling and everything. He goes, Ah, oh, okay. I did okay. Quentin smiling. I like to see it when he smiles. <laughs> hey, let's have a big, uh, big thank you and round of applause to our guest director. Today. Special guest director. Yeah. We'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I had a fantastic time. Thanks for making me feel so at home. At the end of the day, Frank came to me and said, it's the most fun I've ever had in my life. And I'm going to write that down and remind you, because it was. It was a great day. Three directors on the set. Almost good. Almost, almost good. Man, we were like, why did we wait like eight years, all right, to get back together again? What, what all that time was wasted? We could have those years back, yeah. like, cold in our hands. <laughs>